Today we are reading Heliobus Purging Manual, the emergency evil suppression manual distributed within the Ten Lords Commission for preparation in case of out of control Heliobi. By the decree of the Ten Lords, we, the judges of the interrogation division, have reviewed many records in regarding experiences in exercising Heliobi. These findings have been compiled into a comprehensive manual and distributed the staff. We kindly request that you carefully study the contents of this manual in order to acquire the necessary knowledge and skills for effectively exercising Heliobi. Question. What is a Heliobus? Why is it not included in the Ten Lords Commission Standard Exorcism Manual? Answer. Heliobi are rare, elusive, and shapeless entities. They are energy-bound creatures devoid of a fixed shape, driven by the desire to possess the bodies of sentient beings and exert control over them. Further information regarding Heliobi can be found in the list of arch enemies. Heliobi re-emerged into the world after the furnace was damaged. Millennia have passed since their last appearance, which caused the possession tragedy. During that era, the inhabitants of the Shinjo were yet short life species, and the Ten Lords Commission had not yet been established. Heliobi have never harmed the Lo Fu since that tragedy, and unfortunately, the Ten Lords Commission have therefore become lax in our vigilance. At the time of the distribution of this manual, the Commission has initiated our contingency plan and integrated training on exercising Heliobi into the standard curriculum for judges. Question. What are their typical behavior patterns and weaknesses? Answer. According to ancient manuscripts, Heliobi exhibit behaviors akin to swarms of bees. These fiery essences possess the ability to divide and merge, exchanging information and experiences with each other, and enhance their collective strength against adversaries. While Heliobi that have merged together may still be perceived as individual entities, the conglomerate maintains internal hierarchies, reminiscent of ancient Shinjo beliefs that attributed three souls and seven spirits within one human. Within the cluster, certain Heliobi specialize in combat, while others engage in contemplation and debate, and the most powerful oversees strategic coordination. Most Heliobi struggle to cooperate harmoniously with each other due to how they've been tainted by human nature. This weakness can be exploited by posing complex and thought-provoking questions to them, causing them to splinter from within. However, ancient records mention the existence of formidable individual Heliobi, such as the Flint Emperor, from ancient times and the recent invader Fantilia, who has been confirmed to have infiltrated the Shenzhou. These individuals possess unwavering self-awareness and, over time, are able to resolve their internal differences and form an indissoluble whole. The Heliobi call this process fusion. Weaker Heliobi harbor immense fear of getting close to these great elder beings, for once absorbed, it will equal to the death of the weaker Heliobus. Question. What kind of hosts do Heliobi prefer to possess? Answer. Heliobi are drawn to individuals with intense desires, those who have undergone profound life experiences and those harboring many unfulfilled wishes. Hosts possessing such properties are particularly enticing to Heliobi due to the abundance of emotions and experiences they contain. However, it is worth noting that Heliobi do not exhibit discernible preferences when selecting hosts, as evidenced by the distribution of victims in documented cases. Notably, Heliobi display an aversion to possessing long-life species, considering the Xinzhou people indistinguishable when interrogated. It can be inferred that the longevity and robust physical resilience of long-life species hinder Heliobi's ability to subjugate their host's will. Question. What do Heliobi seek through their possession? Answer. By possessing their hosts, Heliobi tap into the person's experiences and emotions, while also taking control of the person's body to fulfill their own desires. When a Heliobis possesses a human host, it adopts the personality and behavioral patterns of that host, leading to the development of a distinct individual awareness that hinders bonding and fusion with other Heliobi. Based on our research, 
It has been observed that heliobi perceive the emotions of their hosts in a manner similar to how humans perceive flavors, such as delicious, sour, sweet, or bitter. Heliobi possess the ability to easily discern the emotional states experienced by their hosts. Question. How does Heliobus possession negatively affect the host? Answer. According to the interview records of the victims, we deduce that once a Heliobus has possessed a host, it persistently disrupts the person's nervous system to speak with the host, then exploits the person's inner desires and vulnerabilities to induce hallucinations and provoke emotions. Initially, the host would only experience the emergence of an additional presence within their mind, another self that comprehends them and engages in conversations with them. However, as time passes, typically within a few days, the host will gradually lose the ability to distinguish whether their thoughts arise from their own brain or instead originate from the Heliobis. Subsequently, the host becomes driven to fulfill their deepest desires to the fullest extent, regardless of how audacious or disruptive these may be. Warriors engage in fierce battles endlessly, Epicureans indulge in excessive feasting, and the lustful completely surrender to their carnal desires. Under the compulsion of the Heliobis, the human's host loses all semblance of self-control and morality, succumbing fully to their innermost desires. This process of gradual insanity is akin to the corruption known as Mara. The interrogation division believes this subject is worthy of further study. Towards the end of the possession process, the host's body will become completely drained by the Heliobis, resulting in sudden spontaneous combustion. This outcome is often fatal for short-life species. Question: How does one eradicate a Heliobis completely? Answer. According to the account of our ancestors, there are scant means to completely eradicate a Heliobis, with the exception of harnessing its power as an inexhaustible energy source for perpetuity. The creation furnace within the Artisanship Commission was constructed for this purpose. The most efficacious approach to contend with a Heliobis is to confine it within an intangible force field, separating it from other sentient beings. The Tin Lords Commission will provide the frontline judges and spirit farers on duty with sacred vessels explicitly crafted for capturing Heliobi. Question: How does one exercise a Heliobis from a possessed host? Answer: The conventional technique for exorcism entails applying violence to the host that is suitable in scope and does not result in permanent damage, rendering the physical body incapacitated. In this case, the Heliobis, unable to feel the emotions of the host, will naturally depart in search of other prey. Nevertheless, it is essential to reiterate that the responsibilities of a judge extend beyond the mere expulsion of malevolent spirits. We work to safeguard the ordinary, everyday life of Shinjo's people. We cannot demand that all judges forsake this method of exorcism, but we must earnestly implore each of you to consider the implications extremely carefully before resorting to such measures. Through the examination of successful exorcism cases, we have concluded that when the host becomes cognizant of the Heliobis's encroachment and no longer remain obsessed with fulfilling their inner desires, they will have a chance of breaking free from the hallucinatory clutches imposed by the Heliobis. In rare circumstances, the Heliobis may voluntarily relinquish its hold on the host. <laughs>